jingle. It's not worth it. Like, welcome to Scissors and Scrubs special Christmas miracle episode. Yay! Yay! Ding, ding, ding. If I had the little jingle balls, ding, 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 ding. I know, that's, yeah. So this episode is bringing us right upon the Christmas Hanukkah season mm-hmm. or any other winter, winter solstice holiday, holiday mm-hmm. we are celebrating at the time. We wish you all a very happy holiday season. Mm-hmm. Um, so we decided that we're going to do like Christmas miracles. Yes. This episode. Because it's just, I mean, that's kind of what Christmas is about. The holiday season's about like just... You know, my son's going through this thing right now where he's questioning his faith. You know, we're Catholic. <clears throat> Me yeah. yeah, mine too. And he doesn't believe in it. And, and so I'm constantly getting questions about, well, do you believe in God? And, da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. and I just feel in this profession, in this, as a nurse in the operating room, if I didn't believe in like, miracles or mm-hmm. believe in something, I couldn't get through. Because mm-hmm. we see it, we see miracles all the time. You know, you see the somebody who got in a, a car accident they shouldn't have lived from mm-hmm. and they walk out of the hospital mm-hmm. three days later. Or somebody shot who should be dead and it missed something. Like, you yeah. see the miracles all the time. So, that's why I think we this episode we should do for Christmas, Christmas. miracles. Um, my own little <clears throat> personal miracle story. I'm going to throw this in real quick. Um, I have to tell this because it's kind of funny, too. So, my mother, heavy smoker. Mm-hmm. For ye- like decades, not even years, multiple decades, yeah. like e- over 50 years, heavy smoker. Though she'll tell you it only happened after she had kids. I'm like, I'm like, well. you've been eating cigarettes for like 50 years. So many times, not many, she's tried to quit like twice. Mm-hmm. All right. She got pneumonia. And the pneumonia was so bad that for her to actually take a drag off the cigarette, she had to take ice water with it. Oh. Or she would go into a raging coughing fit. Oh. So she quit for like a year after that because she thought she was dying. And then once she realized she wasn't dying, right back to smoking. Mm. And then they thought they saw her spotting along. She quit smoking for a couple more months, right back to smoking. As she likes to say, she loves to smoke. It's like her favorite thing to do. You know, he said, my mother's bizarre. I love a cigarette. Uh, I, you know what? It just mm. doesn't do anything for me. Mm-hmm. Though I do like cigars. Mm. So a couple of years ago, my mother, it calls me on the phone. And she's like, um, and, and I love, like my parents, I don't know. They forget what I do for a living or why. She's trying to ask me something without yeah. letting me know what's going on. Mm-hmm. So she's like, so I heard from the doctor and they want to um, they want to put a camera down my throat. <laughs> I'm like, they want a bronchia. Mm-hmm. Well, a camera down. I'm like, mom, what are they looking for? Well, and she's trying to. I said, mom, mm-hmm. do you have a tumor? Like, are they looking for a tumor? Mm-hmm. And she's like, yes. And in my most professional way, I said, I get fucking happy and I slam the phone down and burst into tears. Okay. Bawled my eyes out, got a hold of myself, called her back. I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry. I swore at you, but I've been warning you for my entire life this right. was going to happen. And now here we are. Right. Like, we're going to stage you. Okay. Mm-hmm. So she's going in for this laser procedure. Mm-hmm. She's consented for everything, including an appendectomy. Like, they're going to do everything to her. And I ask one of the girls that works in the OR, I'm like, what, what's going on here? Like, what are we looking at? Because mm-hmm. it's a part of the OR I don't usually work in. It. And she's like, they're staging her. They're not looking at it. They know she has it. They're staging her. Right. So I am like, talk to my dad, talk to my brothers. I'm like, this, this is, is what's it. going on. Mm-hmm. This is it. Like, we're talking lobectomy. I had a surgeon on ready to roll. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, this guy would show up whenever I needed somebody. Boom, there he was, like an angel from the skies. Right. So we bring her in. And uh, she goes in on, and I stay with her till she goes to sleep. And now I settle myself down for the long winter's nap. <laughs> and uh, five minutes later, the surgeon calls. And I'm like, yeah, wow, okay. That yeah, was that's great. not good. That's a peak She's of like, treat. Yeah, yep. because um, it was a mucus plug. It wasn't anything. It was a fucking mucus plug. Only my mother could smoke for 120 years. Yeah, again, 42 not, packs a day. Every perfectly fine. And it's a goddamn mucus plug. So oh. I, I'm i there when they extubate her, and she's first words out of her mouth, God, I could use a cigarette. <laughs> and I was like, you're something. She's like, you know, I promised God if this turned out to be nothing, I would never pick up a cigarette again. 
And to her credit, this was probably four years ago. Mm -hmm. She has never picked up a cigarette wow. again. But there is not a day that goes by she that she has it. not said to me, you know, I really miss smoking. I really wish I was smoking. I really love smoking. Like, yeah, I get it. I got it. You miss smoking. Mm -hmm. But you're alive. Right. So that's my little miracle story because that doesn't happen. There's no way she the, shouldn't. Yeah. They, no. And especially, I mean, three times. Mm -hmm. I'm like, the next time, you're not going to be that lucky. Yeah. So, yes, do I believe that there's something bigger than us in the world? I do because we see it every day. So mm -hmm. we're going to share a couple of stories, a little Christmas miracle stories that have happened to different people. And then we're going to have a special guest on this episode. Yes woman we used to work with who had her own Christmas miracle story to share. So I'm going to pass it over Sparkles. Okay. Um, this one, so I found this story. This isn't really like a Christmas miracle story, but it has oh, Christmas Lord. tied are in. Are we so. deviating from the, the plot here? <sighs> Not really. I liked the names of the people, so I picked it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's I'm wrong. glad your research is <laughs> done very, very I like thorough. the name. I like the name Kiki, so I went with this one. No, you'll see that. <laughs> so right. I got this I'm not going to take a drink then until you're done. Right. It's not funny. <laughs> so I got it from um, Cincinnati.com. That was Cincinnati. Who knew that was a thing? Mm -hmm. It's from uh, March 1st, 2016. Oh, so it's recent. Kind of. Mm -hmm. um, Laura Rice. Oh, we like the name Laura. Mm -hmm. okay. Had spent Christmas, New Year's, and her birthday on life support at oh. Borges Hospital. Oh, I like that name, too. <laughs> yeah. She was in a medically induced coma. It doesn't say what was wrong with her. It just says, I think they kept like the details out. But she's in a medically induced coma on life support okay. months. Okay. Christmas, New Year's, mm -hmm. her birthday must be after that. Her husband, Michael, was told several oh, times. Oh, Mike. Yeah, oh, it took me a minute, but I got it. Yeah. Was told several times um, that she wasn't going to make it. Like they're preparing. I'm like, this is it. You got to, we're going to have down. to take her off. Um, and he knew how much Laura loved the Christmas season. Like, it's her yeah. favorite holiday. She's obsessed with it. She, decor like, loves it. So he vowed to keep all the Christmas lights and decorations up until she woke up and came home. Oof. He's like, I'm not so taking them So that's down. the house I see all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not taking anything down until she gets home. That's and sweet. Yeah. So just as he comes to terms with Laura's dying, like, they were like, this is really, we mm -hmm. got to take her off life support. This is it. She wakes up. Just wakes up. Completely fine. Like, wakes That's up. That's weird. Yep. And she said um, it was completely overwhelming what he did for her because he knows how much she loves Christmas. It's her favorite hot. Like, she was, like, so touched that he mm -hmm. was like, no, this is so important to her. I have to leave it up for her. Like, this is going to somehow get her through. And she said she was really confused when she woke up. Because she can see the date, like on the calendar, or they told her the date, and she's like, "But I, re I, the last thing I remember is putting up Christmas decorations." Wow! Like she had decorated. She'd been out that long. She had been out that long, and yeah. she was like, "I don't understand how it's like. It must have been February." Like, right. well, I, I just put the Christmas decorations up. Um. So, come March 2016, the lights at the house were finally coming down from Christmas because Lara woke up, went home. Don't tell me she goes back into a coma. No, she was fine. And the Christmas lights got to come down. But it was that important to her that I kept them up. Oh, my God. Well, all right. What's your favorite um, favorite thing about Christmas? Do you have, like, a favorite Christmas story? Like, I love a Christmas carol. Favorite Christmas story. Favorite story. I just love that story. I like a Christmas carol. I love it. Any Every version, I watch it. Muppets. <laughs> no show music there. Like, yeah. however you give me a Christmas story. I no, Christmas I like carol a Christmas story. My favorite thing about Christmas, honest to God, and I'm not like, like wicked religious or anything, but we go to mass on Christmas Eve, and that like hour, like the it's lights in mass. there, the music is so pretty. Like they do a beautiful job with it. Like we're there with our, we go with our friends, mm -hmm. you know, the kids' friends, and I'm friends with their parents, and like it's just, I literally love that hour. Like that hour yeah. is my favorite part of Christmas, and it's, it's not like because it's, it's so, mass. it's not because it's religious. It's just. The way that, I don't know, the lighting is different. The flowers are so Everybody's pretty. Happy. The music's so pretty. Everybody's church is there. Full. Compo so, so what the church we go to? Come out and see their shadow and go back yeah. in until next Christmas. The church we, is huge in Stoneham. And then there's a choir loft that's converted into like, there's pews up there. Mm -hmm. So we sit up there anyways. Then they have a hall in the back and they have a chapel in the basement. Full. All three of them run a separate mass at the same time. 
completely yeah. like everybody you've ever seen is there like it's just so you'll nice. never see them again till next christmas Eve, but they're all and there. my mother gets mad every year i do too i do too. The once a year catholics every year i sit oh, i'm sorry they should be twice year because they'll come out in easter dress to the nines and take your seat yeah, yeah. easter christmas and someone also said palm sunday because they get something <laughs> and it's not because of the real it's just uh it's really pretty and it's nice i just and, love christmas yeah. It's almost as much as Halloween. I just love Christmas. No, well, Thanksgiving's my favorite. I don't love cleaning up, but I love it. I like Thanksgiving to eat, but mm. it's my favorite. Mm. Football. I can see why. Yeah, mm. big, big football fan. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so Laura's fine. Lights are down. Laura and Mike are doing good. Laura and Mike are good. All right, mine's a little longer than that. <laughs> okay. I have another one, but I just thought it was fun. That's a good one. I think that's sweet because I'm pretty sure if I woke up from a coma, Brian would be remarried. I don't know. I thought you were dead. They kept telling me you were going to die. Your eyes were long shut for about two months. So, Um, Okay, so my Christmas miracle takes place 20 years ago. We have Carrie Dinsmore. She's eight years old, and it's Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. Christmas morning. The day before, her mom, Diane, had taken Carrie to the ER because her daughter just wasn't feeling good. And the doctor's like, yeah, it could be a headache. It could be a stomach bug. Give her fluid. She'll be fine. Blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. And Christmas morning, her mom's like, something's not right with mm-hmm. this kid. She was listless. She was tired. She's not into the gifts. Like, you know, kids on Christmas morning, Even they're losing their the shit. Flu, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're like losing their minds. They're up at 2 a.m. Like, oh, you know, she's not doing any of that. So she takes her to the pediatrician, Dr. Boris, and he meets them at the office. And he kind of looks at her. He immediately admits her to the um, pediatric floor. Mm-hmm. The nurse noticed her vital signs are all over the place. And they order CAT scan. The CAT scan shows a large mass on her brain. Oh, Jesus. So she is immediately airlifted to Columbian Presbyterian in New York City. Mm-hmm. Mom's beside herself. It's Christmas. Oh, She's now left her 11-year-old at home with friends. Nobody's opening anything like Christmas is halted. Off. Yeah. So they ship her in to Columbian Presbyterian and in walks this young, like, little whippersnapper mm-hmm. neurosurgeon, Dr. Jeffrey Oppenheim. Uh, he happened to be on call that day, and he's the one that sees Carrie's CT scan. She has a huge brain hemorrhage on her cerebellum. Oof. And for those who don't know what is the cerebellum does in the brain, it controls your breathing, it controls your heart rate, mm-hmm. it controls your motor, like your involuntary actions. Mm-hmm. Like, so you shut down the cerebellum, you die. Mm-hmm. So the bleeding is causing intense pressure on her cerebellum, and things are not looking good for Carrie. Yeah. She slips into a coma. Um, she's, her pupils are not responding to light, which mm-hmm. usually that means you're dead. Mm-hmm. So she's very, cl- she's very close. And Oppenheimer tells the parents, he's like, quote, look, she's near death. She has to go into surgery right away. I don't know if I can fix this and she's probably going to die. Yes. Merry fucking Christmas, dude. They have a way of really softening that. I don't know if I can fix this. She's probably going to die. I just want to give you a heads up. And by the way, happy Hanukkah. <laughs> so, um. He's not a pet pediatric surgeon, but he has to take her in right away because it's, it's... Yeah, they don't bad. have time to wait. Yeah. So the family is keeping the vigil at the hospital. Friends are there. The daughter's at home waiting still. Mm-hmm. Priest is called in. Everybody's waiting. Seven hours later, um, before... Um, I'm sorry. I'm like totally stroking out here. <laughs> Maybe I have the same thing. Seven hours later, Oppenheimer comes out. He's like, surgery went well. I don't know. We just have to wait and see what happens with mm-hmm. her. He's like, but, it, you know, I don't think it looks good. It was a lot of bl- blood, blah, 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 blah. Next day he goes and he rounds. She's wide awake, talking like like nothing happened. Has no, no idea anything even happened to her. She's fine. So um, she's 27 years old now. She does not remember anything about what happened Christmas Day or the hospital stay. She does remember that she had to learn how to walk. Oof. So her quote is, I remember the nurses and the doctors and how caring they were. She comes home New Year's Eve. And the Christmas gifts are all still wrapped, everything. They celebrate Christmas when she comes home. Mm -hmm. And her mom calls it a Christmas miracle. Oppenheimer states, I'm not even a Christian, I'm Jewish, but I like to think that this was a Christmas miracle. He uh, says she was minutes from being brain dead Mm -hmm. because of all the pressure. Mm -hmm. Three years later, she actually has another (gasps) small brain hemorrhage because she has carinomas in her brain. A cavernoma is an abnormal cluster of blood vessels with small bubbles of caverns filled with blood, making them look like a berry. And they put up like a raspberry. So I'm looking at it, and I'm like, wow, oh, it looks just like a raspberry. I'm like, put your glasses on, because it is a raspberry. 
I don't know why they stuck a raspberry picture in with all these CAT scans and everything. But I'm like, wow, I don't remember. (laughs) Yeah, dumbass. So, um, since the walls of a cavernoma cavernoma are Mm -hmm. weak, they leak blood and they cause seizures, stroke-like symptoms, hemorrhages, and headaches. She's had no other symptoms since fifth grade. And guess what she grew up to be? A pediatric doctor. Close. A nurse. Yes. I always find kids who have had these issues or they have some kind of hospital, they always grow up. That and children of nurses. Though I know my daughter has no intention of ever becoming a nurse. So Dr. Oppenheimer goes on to become the mayor of Montebello, New York, and Mm -hmm. remains the family's go-to neurosurgeon. I don't have a go-to nurse. Yeah, but if you had those. True, because then her mom had one of them as well. Oh, must be and genetic. Oppenheimer scrubbed in on her little cavernoma. So that's my Christmas miracle That's story. a good one. It's a little one. These are all leading up to a really good one. Yeah. Missy. Um, so my real Christmas miracle mm-hmm. story I got from ksat.com or ksat.com. I don't know. Um. So this lady, Maria Juarez, she's home alone with her five-year-old, three-year-old, and one-year-old children on Christmas Eve morning. Okay. Okay. So it's Christmas Eve morning time. Um, Her husband's at work. All of a sudden, she starts to feel real dizzy. Her hearing was off. Like, she suddenly couldn't really hear well. Um, So she lays down on the couch. She's like, I'm dizzy. Like, I just got to lay down. Um, She's got all these little kids running around. (laughs) Your face when you said that. <laughs> you know, like, I gotta lay down. Um, it's gonna be Christmas. Yeah. They're I'm wild. Gonna have, I'm gonna have you know seizures and headaches. And yeah. I had a million kids running around me. Um, she they like, ramp up at Christmas. Oh my like, Christmas Eve, they ramp it. up. It's almost yeah. impossible. And to then get they're them exhausted the for the week after. Yeah. They don't even want to get off the couch. No, they just lay there. Yeah. Um, so she lays down, and she all of a sudden noticed that she's talking weird because the side of her mouth is drooping. Oh. So she immediately recognizes this is really bad and tries to call 911. But she keeps calling 119 because she's having a stroke. stroke. So she's calling 119, 119, 119. She's not getting anything. Her husband's not there. He's at work. She finally gets her mother. I don't know if it was through text. So none of the million kids are old enough to die on 911. I mean, 531, maybe the five-year-old. But I don't know if she could express to him, I need you to call because she couldn't talk right. So I don't know if she gets her mother through text or not, but she finally gets a hold of her mother, and her mother calls 911 for her because no one can understand her now, right. what she's saying. Um, How scary. I can't even imagine. Um, the firefighters, you know, 911 calls, so firefighters, police, the ambulance, they all arrive. The firefighters stay at our house with the kids because there's nobody there while well, the ambulance takes her to the hospital. Um, they take her to Northeast Baptist Hospital. When she gets there and they see the severity of the stroke that this woman, Maria, is having, they immediately ship her to St. Luke's Baptist Hospital, mm-hmm. which is a um, like a stroke center. Right. So That's she gets... Thing. People don't realize not every place has... Not every like, place can treat a stroke. Right. Right. Um, her neurosurgeon was Dr. Ramesh Grandi. Sounds good. Um he says she's progressing towards brain death. He sees her. She's, he's like, she's going to be brain you dead soon. Get goosebumps. Yeah. So um, stroke. her stroke score was the highest stroke so you can have. Um, and so then they do a CT, get the images. Um, her basilar artery, which is the artery at the back of your brain, which pretty much supplies like all the yeah. blood going up there, has no blood flow whatsoever. Ooh. The stroke has completely closed off that artery. Um, so Dr. Grandi does an emergent stroke rescue. So we do these all the time all the time because we work at a stroke primary stroke center. Um and they go up through your groin, they put wires up through your groin, goes up your ves- blood vessels mm-hmm. up into your brain, and then we pull the clot out. What's amazing to me is you see somebody coming in with such major stroke symptoms and they leave mm-hmm. fine mm-hmm. when they're done. So he gets her in there, she's really bad, like really bad. Um he gets the wires all up there, removes the whole clot. An MRI after the procedure, they did the MRI to see like how much of this brain is now dead because yeah. that there was That's no huge. blood flow. That's from, huge. She was home, then she went to yeah. another hospital, then she went there, you know, at least an hour. They're thinking a lot of this brain's gonna be dead. Minimal, minimal brain damage. Oh my god. Um and 
he just said it's miraculous because there was a complete blockage of like this main artery yeah. of the brain. How there was no dead brain tissue was wow. beyond. Um, within an hour, Maria was fully functional. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. And she walked out of the hospital. I don't, it doesn't say what day she went in, but it says she walked out on Thursday. Oh, assuming again, yeah. only a few okay. days. I'm like, just say she went in on Christmas Eve. Yeah, but it didn't say if that was like a Monday or a Thursday I'm before. It was on uh, Tuesday. She walked out several days later. Um, but she, like, completely fine no, within an hour. It was a miracle. That is a miracle. Um, typical risk factors for strokes are high blood pressure, smoking, high cholesterol, and irregular heartbeat, and drug abuse. Maria was a healthy person beforehand. Like, there was no... It can just happen. Right. There was no reason, really, for her to get this. They said she'll make, like, small, healthy lifestyle changes, probably, like, a better diet mm-hmm. or... Get rid of the kids. Yeah. Um, and take an aspirin daily. That's all she has to do. Like, completely fine. <sighs> Um, Dr. Grani stresses the importance of recognizing the signs of a stroke quickly and getting to a hospital with a primary stroke center quickly. You got to get somewhere where they can get that stroke out of your head. Yeah. Um, America's American Stroke Association uses the acronym FAST to teach people mm-hmm. the signs of a stroke. Um, F stands for face droop. If you if someone is if you're suspecting something's wrong, like someone's acting weird, talking funny, just looking a little funny, ask them to smile. If half of their smile doesn't go up. It's very obvious. It's very obvious. It's not like you even need to do that. You will notice. Right. It's very obvious. But they say, you know, right. something's funny. Say, can you smile for me? Mm-hmm. Check the side of their mouth. You know, if one of the side goes down. A is for arm weakness. Um, is one arm weak or numb? Ask the person to raise both arms. If one of them, like, gravitates mm-hmm. towards the floor, if they can't keep it up, that's a huge sign of a stroke. Um, speech difficulty, is their speech slurred? Are they unable to speak or are they very hard to understand, like gobbled speech? Um, if they say things backwards, if they're saying random words in places of other yeah. words, um, ask them to repeat a simple sentence, like say, the sky is blue. See if they can repeat that back to you, because a lot of times they are not going to be able to right. say that back to you. Like they might say the blue is sky or, you know, something else. Um, and T is for, it's time to call 911. If someone has these symptoms, and even if they had them and then all of a sudden it goes away, like if their mouth was drooping, but then Doesn't they're like, matter. oh, it's fine. Call 911. Um, and take note of the time that you notice the symptoms because they, you need to get in there quickly. They need to know right. how long they've been having this going on. And Maria, the woman, um, says, any tingling in your body? Like I, when she said she felt dizzy, she must have been feeling some sort of tingling. She said, any tingling you're feeling in your body, anything that feels weird, call 911 immediately. She said, time's precious, and she's very lucky she's that she had no damage. Lucky. Yeah. When you talk about the stroke symptoms, I had this patient come down. <laughs> and I didn't, nobody, had, I hadn't even looked at the chart yet. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm picking the chart up, and he looks at me. He's like, do you have a duck? And I was like, I'm looking behind me. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> He's like, do you have a duck? I'm like, no. Um, and I wanted to crack a joke, but just the way he was asking me, like, and I'm looking through the chart. And then he's like, do you have a duck on a bear? <laughs> like, what the fuck is he talking about? And I look and I see he had had a stroke. And I'm like, I don't know what made me ask him, like, do you need to go to the bathroom? And he's like, yes, I need a duck. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Like, So he had one of those strokes. Right. Where he couldn't come up with words. Right. And he would, he thought he was saying bathroom, mm-hmm. but he was saying duck. I just happened to be on my game uh, that particular uh-huh. morning to go. <laughs> Do you have a duck? You must no, have been. I don't, but I have a rabbit. Like, I don't know. I, no, yeah, I have, but here's a bedpan. Yes. I, I think I did say to him, no, but I have chickens. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, yep. That's a quite a story you got there. Yeah. So she's like, the doctor Grandi was saying, like, conf- I cannot believe there was no, no brain damage. No. This week's episode is going to be brought to us by Harmony Surgical Designs. Harmony Surgical Designs is a supplier of surgical hats, compression socks, and badge pulls. Mm-hmm. They have four types of hats. They have the Buffon, the Euro Scrub Hat, the Modern Ponytail, and the Florence. They, If you don't like any of the material or any of the prints, which I don't know why you wouldn't because they're, they're gorgeous, mm-hmm. um, you can buy your own material, whether it be a Patriots hat or a Bruins hat. I know how everybody loves them. Or Halloween or Christmas, and you can send them in, and they will make the hats for you and send them back. 
Mm-hmm. Laura got to try the socks. They are, they work wonders. They're great compression socks. Silky smooth, go easy on, easy off, no problems, love them. They also have a subscription club. You can join. You get two hats every month for 25% off the retail price and free shipping. And if you really, really want to match in the OR, you can have the combo deal. You can get a badge, a hat, and a sock and socks to match. And this month, I believe it's donuts. Yes. You can get a donut hat, a donut badge pull, and donut socks. Mm-hmm. So look up Harmony Surgical Designs at HarmonySurgical.com, and you can find them on social media at Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, HarmonySurgicalDesigns.com. So this is going to lead us into Missy's story. So mm-hmm. Missy is a nurse we worked with, mm-hmm. and I always say Missy's like... When I say this, it's not derogatory. She's like a witch. Yes. She has this like sixth sense. Every time I was pregnant, I wouldn't tell anybody yet. Mm-hmm. And I would come in and she was like, I have a dream. You were pregnant last yeah. night. You were the girl. And she was right every yeah. goddamn time. She's uh, the sweetest nurse. She's one of the first friends I made at the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody loved her. Everybody loved her. And she cries at the, the drop of a hat. Yeah. Yeah, God love her. Yeah, we had a patient come in. Oh God, the guy had to say the triple A. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) he had to be like what ninety five at minimum. Yep, and he was like mowing the lawn. He was out mowing his lawn at ninety five and drops. Yeah, she is at the foot of the bed sobbing, and I literally moving her sick and fucking moving, moving her (laughs) sick and get the boots moving. I'm like, what are you crying for? (laughs) And she's like, well, he had such a good lawn. I'm like, he was ninety five mowing the lawn. That's a pretty good one to die that way. Like, good for him. Yeah. Stop crying. This is a natural process. Yeah. Or go He's, somewhere else. That's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. If you can mow your lawn at 95, yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I can remember the surgeon, and I don't know if you remember one of the comments he made, and I was like, really? It was really. Oh, I, I can't don't even remember that. Because you'd I be like, I remember. I just remember her falling over. Like, all like, I mean, this is pretty good. Yeah. He didn't know it was coming. Just, yeah. It wasn't like a 20 year old wrapped around a tree, you know, 95. No, and it wasn't like it was some horrific. Like, yeah. he just. He was gone. Yeah. I was just That's quick. exactly how and I want to go. You want to go like that. I want to yeah. be doing what I'm doing, like, dancing. This is really the perfect. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, yeah. But really. Ball and a rise out. Yeah. So sweetest, sweetest woman. She is. Just yeah. love her to death. So she is, uh, we're going to have her tell her story. Mm-hmm. It's a great Christmas story. And, and every- not only does she cry, but she makes everybody oh, cry. Oh, of course she does. Yeah. Of course she does. And But she also makes you laugh. Oh, she my God. Yeah. Wicked funny. Yeah. Um, so, Missy, take it away. <laughs> So we have Missy here, mm-hmm. as we have kindly introduced earlier. Um, Missy, I saved your story of our Christmas miracle story because it's the best story ever. I think it is. I love it. Well, I, I love it too because I I was so overwhelmed that day. I couldn't believe it. I do believe in miracles, and I believe that you know most people who work in the medical field act actually see them more than anyone else. I totally agree. Mm-hmm. And it's it's amazing to me. And you feel it coming. You absolutely feel it coming. It's like and it's like a force that you can't figure out, but you know it to be true. All right, we'll set the stage. Okay, the so stage. now So what are we talking? I, what day is it? It's the day before mm-hmm. Christmas Eve. And I'm I had children and I am a nurse in an operating room and my least favorite thing to do is to work with children in the operating room. Brutal. It's brutal. And I applaud all nurses who do pediatrics because to me that is like one of the hardest things to do because if you have children at home, it's your first thought. It's your first mm-hmm. worry. So it's now late in the afternoon. I'm thinking about all the things I haven't got done for Christmas and I find out it's my turn to be up. It was like an up system. You know, if you were mm-hmm. the last one, then you're the first one up. So I go to the desk, and they tell me that um, they have a six-year-old little girl who's coming in for a bone biopsy. I am incensed. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, you know, the idea the day before Christmas Eve to do a child, and not an emergency, but mm-hmm. a bone biopsy, is insane. Mm-hmm. And I'm a little perturbed by it, and I have to tell everybody before I say, I don't like to do children, and this is especially bad because it's my daughter, my youngest, was six years old at the time. Mm-hmm. And to me, I, I, a bone biopsy, and um, the charge nurse said to me, 
well, they're, they're, they're questioning, you know, cancer. I go, of course they're questioning cancer. I was like rude. <laughs> you know, I was like, you know, I, I'm still upset. And so I said, okay, okay. I mean, it is my turn. I'll definitely do it, but I'm not going, I, I'm, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> So I'm I, letting you know uh, I am I'm protesting upset. this I'm case. <laughs> so it's we're going to go into a huge room. Room t- it's a huge room in a large hospital, and it's one of the largest rooms because it's an orthopedic room, and usually they do hips and knees, and so it's it's a big room, and it has an induction area that's just it, it's it's a good size as well. And so right before I, they tell me they're going to send for the patient, I go over to converse with the surgeons, and of course I'm going to let them know how I feel as well, <laughs> that I'm like incensed that we're doing a bone biopsy on a six-year-old two days before Christmas. And I can't understand why they wouldn't wait till after Christmas so mm-hmm. the child doesn't have to stay in the hospital, one, and um, you know miss Christmas mm-hmm. and be here. So they go on to tell me that this child is coming in from um, the Midwest and it's, a, it's in a dire situation. She's been, uh, she's been told and the family's been told that she has cancer in a very um, angry and fast growing cancer that they need to figure out what to do and they want to they want to put the her on chemo as soon as possible and I'm still upset about that so I said so you're bringing in a little girl to have a bone biopsy that you're telling me that she has a really rambunctious cancer that's probably going to kill her before her next Christmas so you're not going to allow her to have this Christmas Mm -hmm. and I am like and he's going we need to we need to get on this. This this patient needs this. This and 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 then he goes further to tell me that you know because what well, we're discussing it that this family has nothing, no money. That she's traveling with her mother, and that they're probably going to have to stay in her room with her after um, postoperatively. And I and because this is their last resort, and they and they're traveling here and they and they're they're looking for hope you can tell me they shot the dog on the way out too i mean jesus christ (laughs) honest to god well i mean you i was like you know and still i'm like okay all right all right okay we'll we'll get this so the patient arrives you know and you know we go to greet the patient and well you know we were setting up the room i'm still grumbling like Mm -hmm. oh my god (laughs) This poor person's not going to even have Christmas here, and they come from another state, and they're not even going to have Christmas with their family. I'm like, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm myself, really. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, I go to greet the patient who arrives with her mother, and I don't know if you've ever seen what a gurney looks like or a stretcher, but it's huge, and she's six years old, mm-hmm. and she's on there, and she looks so very small. And I come in there and I'm going to say, okay, I go, hey, hi, my name is Missy and I'm going to be your nurse. And I introduce myself to the mother and how are you? And I look at her, you know, I do my first assessment on her and she looks amazing. Mm -hmm. She looks like she's an angel. Mm -hmm. She's She's crying. She's crying. (laughs) I told you. She's got curly blonde red hair and incredibly clear blue eyes and pink cheeks Mm -hmm. and she's smiling and I've taken care of people who have had cancer before and children too more than I'd like to say I have and she didn't look like any of that Mm -hmm. so I'm curious now about you know what happened and why she's here as well and so I said so I mean are you happy to be in Boston and she said I go for Christmas so I guess Santa will have to find you here and so she said did you I, I said did you ask Santa to tell 
them you were going to be here? And she said, oh no, but he'll be here. I said, I'm sure he will. And what did you ask Santa for? And so she said, with her southern drawl accent, red shoes. <laughs> now, her mother goes, that's all she really wants. She just wants red shoes. She didn't ask for anything else. And of course, I knew that they didn't have any money and there wasn't anything else. There wasn't anything else at all because they had spent all their money to come here from the mid Midwest. And so this was the Christmas present. This was the Christmas that they were looking for. I, so I said, oh, red shoes are beautiful. She said, they are. I love red shoes. <laughs> it's cute after my own heart. I love red shoes too. <laughs> Who doesn't, for God's sake? I love me a nice pair of red heels. Are you kidding me? So, you know, I go back in and I say to the resident, listen, this kid looks way too good to have any kind of cancer. I mean, like way too good. She's got bright eyes, good skin. She's not lethargic. She's pleasant. She doesn't feel like she's in any pain. I asked her. I asked her mother. She doesn't have any of those things. He's going, Missy, she has a fast-growing cancer, and she needs to have the surgery. I go, I, I understand that. She, you're thinking she has that, but I'm thinking she doesn't. She doesn't have it. She doesn't have cancer. You don't want her to have cancer. I go, I don't want anyone to have cancer, <laughs> but I especially don't want that kid to have the answer. You're right. So he said to me, I, I have, I have x-rays here and we're going to go and show it to you. So he throws it up on the lighted, um, screen mm -hmm. and he throws up, he goes in the last six months, we'll show you what this looks like. So six months ago, this looked like it was like a small little bean. Mm -hmm. And then the next month, you know, five months, you know, Grew bigger and bigger and bigger, and like her little shoulder had a had a a what looked like a huge bean. He said, "See the way the shape of the shape of it is? It's like an oblong." And he said, "And it's so big." He goes, "This is a, a fast growing sarcoma, and it's very rare too." I said, "I'm letting you know right now. You can show me a hundred pictures on the wall. If have you taken a look at?" at her outside she looks like an angel she looks like an angel and not like an angel that's going to go to heaven <laughs> she looks like an angel on this table and her mother i i don't think she thinks she has it either i don't know i i don't believe you so he's going missy we're going to be doing a biopsy we're going to find it out i said she doesn't have it he goes, she has a fast-growing tumor, <laughs> like, like he's fighting with me. He's got a fast-growing tumor, and she's definitely got cancer, and we're going to do the surgery. I said, I understand we're going to do the surgery, but, you know, now I'm making a big scene, of course, of the <laughs> thing, you know. I'm like, anesthesia's involved, the scrub tech, and the other, like, you know, uh, minion. It's all, all these people, you know, they're all sitting there going, I go, I know. And she wants red shoes for Christmas. I go, I'll let you know right now. If I ask my six-year-old what she wants, she wants like 40,000 things mm -hmm. and everything her brother wants, and she's a girl, mm -hmm. okay? What kid in the world only wants one damn thing? A red shoes. I go, I, I go, she's, she's, she doesn't have cancer. And I'll bet you she doesn't have cancer. And so now the attending said, Missy, she has cancer, and you're going to have to get over it and <laughs> move forward with this. We're going to do the best we can for her because that's what we do. I go, I'm going to do the best thing for her, but I'm going to make a bet right now. I'm going to bet all of you, and I want money. I go, because if she doesn't have cancer, we're going to get her those red shoes. Because on Charles Street, there's a small little shoe store, mm -hmm. and in that window surprisingly enough, are red shoes, are red shoes mm -hmm. for a small child. So those red shoes are going to be on her feet. And I'll tell you what, I said, I know I give everybody a hard time. I said, and so if we do a case, I'll, I'll make a bet. I won't give you any hard time. I'll stay after the case. I'll finish any of your cases. I'll do anything you want, but we have to make bets. Mm -hmm. And so Prior to that, too, because I, I don't always trust my own judgment, I had I had other nurses come out and go, go take a look at that kid. And so they went out there, I go, does she look like she has, like, you know, 
like, you know, in the death door cancer to you? I mean, don't even talk to her. Just look at her. And they came out, oh, she looks, you know, she, she looks like a kid. Yeah, I go, she looks like a kid that doesn't have cancer. <laughs> I know she doesn't have cancer. So now, you know, years ago where we used to work, you had an intercon system mm -hmm. where you could call out to the desk and you could, you know, and they could talk to you and you could talk to them. So I called out to the desk, I, you know, before we brought the patient in, I said, we have a little girl here and we're going to be doing a bone biopsy for cancer, but she doesn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, and I'm making bets right now. And if anybody wants to come in and on the bet, I go, I will do anything anyone asks. You know, I will still late. I will give back their money. I will do anything. And so, of course, people are going, yeah, we want that part of that bet. We're going to go. I go, go ahead. Go check her out. I don't care. Go take a look at her. You know, come and make your decisions, right? So even in the room, the anesthesiologists, the other residents, you know, they're going, we'll take that bet. You know, did you see what I go? I saw those x rays. It's you know, <laughs> we'll she doesn't. I'll take that back. That's nice. We're all better. We're, We're all better. Better. Walk in. Okay, so we bring the patient into the room, right? I, I have her say goodbye to her mother, and I and I say to her mother, We're gonna take really good care of her, and you know, sometimes the best things you you wish for come true and she said oh, we traveled so far I go we're gonna do what we can and it's gonna work out get back in the room <laughs> <laughs> give her a minute she's gonna pull herself together <laughs> I, gotta, yeah. I get back in the room and uh, of course now we're gonna put the patient to sleep I hold her little hand her little hand feels a little warm but you know like she's, she's been like in there she's been running around she's on the been, stretcher yeah right so, you know, I'm, she, that's right, exactly. And so she goes to sleep. We do the surgery, you know, through the whole time. People are calling in, five bucks. <laughs> you know, like, they're calling into the room. I got ten at the desk, you know. <laughs> you know, I said, okay, okay. So now we're waiting for pathology. Of course, when pathology you know, we take the tumor down. I drove, I drove it down. I walked it down there. You know, like I had it myself in my hand. I'm like, oh yeah, this is going down with me. So, um, we're waiting now. We're waiting and waiting. And one of the surgeons breaks scrub, and they go down too because now it's taken such a long time. And I, and of course now I'm sweating the stuff. <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna be working overtime for the next twenty years. And not only that, like you know, I'm like, oh my god, you know. This I told this mother that everything was going to be all right. You know, I said it, you know. Anyway, so they come back. He comes back. The intercom, you know, they beep into the room. It's pathology. This is pathology speaking. We're calling on patient so-and-so and so-and-so. You know, we, you know, blah, blah, blah. On, you know, shoulder, blah, 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 blah. And they said, yes. They said, it's not cancer. It's a it's a super infection <laughs> of the shoulder. And there were people oh, screaming right. in the room. We were dancing. We were doing all this and that. And I went, wait a minute. You owe me money. You owe me money. You owe me money. All of you owe me money. We got $86. Okay. I which was, at that time which was at $100. That time. Well, my daughter is like, it's, it's almost 30 years ago because my daughter is 36. It's got to be even... That's Maybe it was I like, started there. yeah. So we leave. I so like people are hand, there's money at the desk. People are throwing money. We never even bet. <laughs> Anyways, now the doctor says to me, "What are you going to do with this money?" You know, because we're not supposed to know that they don't have any money. Right. We're not. I mean, this was before HIPAA even, but we're not supposed to discuss people's time. I'll. I said I'll, I'll figure out something. <laughs> And so they said, um, I'm going to give it to her. I go, if she doesn't get those red shoes, I'm going in there. And I'll buy the red shoes. You know, I said, she's getting red shoes. Today. He goes, don't you feel better now, Missy? That I go, what, that she missed her Christmas? In, you know, yeah, for a super infection. Super infection. What I feel good about is that she doesn't have that fast-growing, <laughs> bean-like tumor. So what did you said, do with the money? So... 
I decided that when I uh, I made up this super lie, <laughs> along with the super infection, <laughs> and then I told the mother that that we knew that um, she couldn't have brought all their presents on the plane because there would probably be too many. So what we did is is that we have some money right here. And the odd thing about that, I said, there's a street right across from the hospital called Charles Street. And there's a pair of red shoes in the window. And I'm not quite sure how much they cost. I said, but if you want me to go and get them, I will. I don't know her shoe size. She goes, no, my mother's here with me. We can go and get that. But before I even said that to her, I went to visit them in the, you know, mm -hmm. in the recovery room and to give her the money. And I said to her, I opened the curtain and I said, Merry Christmas. She goes, and the mother goes, this was the Christmas we've been waiting for. We always, we, we hoped and prayed that this, this would be the best Christmas, and it is. And I said, it is for me too. And that's when I said, we loved her so much, and you know she was so good, and there were so many people who wanted to see her. I said, and we knew we, we, we couldn't bring all those presents. So I go, if, and then I went on to say about the red shoes. She said, no, my mom is there. So that little girl and her whole family got the best Christmas and all of my life since then, every Thanksgiving at the table, you tell we, we tell the story <laughs> of the red shoes, of the red shoes <laughs> and they tell somebody else and somebody else tells somebody else. And now we're sharing this story with you because I thought it was the best story I had ever heard. Oh my God. I had chills because I had never seen anything like that. And I never, it's the first time you saw her, you felt that feeling that there's something greater going on than you know. But you also have a little bit of a witch in you, so you know things that nobody else does. <laughs> I mean, that may be true. You're kind of psychic, so mm -hmm. it's a little but scary. You, you just knew. You, yeah. You, you feel it, I think, anyway. Well, thank you for sharing the story with us. We appreciate well, it. I'm We're so going to have you back on in a couple of months. So everybody get ready because Missy's coming back. Yeah, <laughs> but I'll be crying about something else. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So okay. that was Missy. Mm -hmm. Hope you love her as much as you, we do. And if she left you crying, I have it. I know. It's just such a great story. It's like one of my, when I thought of this podcast today, and I was like, this is, the story's going to go on. I was going to do it for, I think, Mother's Day. Yeah. And I asked her if we could use it. And then I was like, no, that's a Christmas miracle story. Yeah. Like, we definitely going to use that. Um, so we're going to wrap this episode up with my favorite part. <laughs> Every time we do a fucking holiday, it's my favorite. Favorite. I'm gonna ruin Christmas for you too. Yay! <laughs> Christmas is out. Would you know somewhere in there somebody's carving something with a knife in the dock on a wet surface, right? I mean, there's close. a knife somewhere in there. It's, so it's somebody's close. carving in the dock. Well, we'll get there. All right, I can't wait. All right, so my I, favorite. <laughs> I wish we could do these every fucking. Episode. I'm pretty sure I could find a way to ruin yeah. everything we talk about. <laughs> these are my favorites. Um, so I got these from USA Today. Mm -hmm. com. Um, Christmas safety. Oh, Christmas safety. Five hidden dangers can cause injury and even death. Scissors and wrapping paper, right? Come on. Paper cuts. What? Those two. <laughs> <laughs> Deadly wrapping paper. First one, Santa. No, 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 no. Boop. Back up. Beep, beep, beep. Santa's deadly. Deadly. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not deadly, but <laughs> causes injuries. Are we at Halloween? <laughs> Santa, like real life? like um, No, like, you know, the guys. At the mall? Santa's helpers. Santa's mall mm -hmm. friends. So in a quote-unquote lighthearted analysis of Christmas injuries, ScienceDirect.com noted hundreds of injuries with Santa impersonators. Hundreds? Hundreds. More than 270 children were injured between 2007 and 2016. What? For the love of God are the injuries? Most were falls from Santa's laps. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get away from the pedophile at the mall. No! No! I don't want to see the lollipops. <laughs> He's got those velvet pants on. The kids are all wiggly. They slip and fall into the tile. Crack ahead. <laughs> 
<laughs> one child <laughs> out of the 270 went to the ER after falling while running away from Santa. Told in you. Fright. Told you. Mm-hmm. Terrified. Terrified. Slipped and fell. Had to go to the closet. ER. <laughs> so. <laughs> Must have hit her head. I'm hoping. I don't. Well, you know those tile floors in the mall. They're slippery. Oh, well. They got those little patent leather yeah. shoes on. <laughs> Can't catch her in that fucking velvet dress no, with the big bow. No, away. <laughs> it's coming unraveled. <laughs> so Santa, number one. Santa's number injury one makeup. nemesis of Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, number two, unwrapping gifts. Unwrapping them, not wrapping them no. with scissors and tape. Unwrapping, yes. Unwrapping. Who's getting strangled in bows? Yeah. In two, a 2016 study published by Quartz noted that injuries with knives and scissors spike on Christmas Day. They found 1,700 documented Christmas-related <laughs> ER visits. I would... Wrap my kid in anything. I would never go to the ER in Christmas over that. I'd be horrified. No. I mean, my kid stabbed himself opening his gifts. Like, I just wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, so there was, like, these 1,700 ER visits on Christmas Day related to Christmas unwrapping injuries. Um, like a 19-year-old man lacerated thumb with knife while opening Christmas present. Like, this He's is a, a child. Man. You can't open it without a knife. Apparently not. Come on. And then last raise your thumb enough to go to the ED. He probably got the knife for Christmas. It was like, look what I got. Yep. Oh, I'll um, get that for you. Yep. The study concluded that scissors should be avoided when opening presents on Christmas Day. Speechless. Yeah. I use a pen. Well, if you're opening a box, you could use a set of keys. I use keys or a pen. I no, use you a just pen too until I break stab the, the pen and then, and then you everywhere. break it. No <laughs> but that, I do use a pen. Um, Where's so, time to get up and even get the scissors? Come on. No. You use whatever's handy on Christmas. Yeah, exactly. Um, so be careful with your scissors and knives on Christmas opening presents. Yeah, don't do it in the dark on a wet surface. No. Mm-hmm. Always do it in light. But be careful. <laughs> Christmas trees. Well, those those I'll give you because those go up like data yep. boxes. Like that. There's always a fire for Christmas trees. Yeah. Somebody burning everything down. Christmas tree fires. Caused an average of $12 million in damage in 10 deaths per year. I believe it. Between 2013 and 2015. So in two years. I have been, my brother's a firefighter. He's like, I can't believe you had that death trap in your house. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, I don't have it decorated with like live candles. Like, doesn't you, matter. I know. I know. So I know. they say to pick a fresh tree if you're getting a, Not a the real tree. Brown tree. Pick a fire resistant tree if you're getting a fake tree. Mm hmm. Um, don't keep it away from sale that's made out of asbestos. Yeah, keep it away from heat sources. Don't put it right on top of your heater. <laughs> um, and water them every day. Make yeah. sure the thing is full of water. We're constantly do you water, do you water, do you water, do you water. Do not let it get. But even dry. then, it's still it gets pretty dry by the fourth week. So a few years ago, I think Sammy. I don't remember if both of them were on me or just Sam because we always have a fake tree. I'm allergic to everything <laughs> under the sun, including trees. So we always have a fake tree because I can't I didn't breathe. You're allergic to- oh my god, I can't even walk near a birch tree. I immediately, <laughs> like I can't breathe. But it even just she literally is allergic everything. to every- Grass, everything. Everything. Fun out of you. I know. So the life out of it. we always had a fake tree because I couldn't breathe with mm-hmm. the tree in the house. So they were like really beg, can we please have a real tree? Can we please? So I was like, fine, we'll get a real tree. I can't water it though because I like I mm-hmm. break out in hot. Like I can't do that. And they're like, no, we'll do it. Okay. So we get it in there. Jack is helping Mike bring it in. <laughs> They're setting it up, and he's putting the water. And then he comes up. He's like, "Um, ah. kids get hives all Jack over." Jack does. Him. Yeah. Well, he has the he's same you. Yeah. Yep. He's got the hives all over. He's like, "I'm allergic to the tree." I'm like, "I know you're allergic to the tree. Like I told you. Like we're, all- you know, you're allergic." She's like, "I don't know how to do this. It's like not. It's like, you know, not planted on the ground. Like it doesn't matter." So after that, and then he would get like itchy, get hives, he'd get. No more he's like, "We trees. can't have more, more real tree." So we. We stick with the fake, but it's fire That's resistant. Insane. Yeah. Oh, hot hives go off. Can't breathe. <laughs> Sitting there looking at the tree, <laughs> dying. It's so <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Last thing I'll ever see. Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Trake me. So Sam still is upset that we don't have the real tree, but I can breathe Poor and so Sam. can Jack. You're allergic to everything. Everything. You have no fun. Yep. So and be careful if you're allergic to trees. Well, yeah. Don't you have know, real. You want to get hives from your balsam fir or your Fraser? No, I just light a candle. It's like there's a real tree in there. <laughs> just like it. Just like Why don't you just get the friggin' 
air freshener, the pine tree. Yeah, like the cat. We your, just hang it on the tree. Hang it from your dining room light. Yeah. Um, the fourth way to get injuries is by decorating. What do the bulbs break and you slice your feet wide open? Bingo. <laughs> I'm so smart. Hanging decorations can be very dangerous. I can't. I Falls can't. from ladders can be deadly. Well, yes. Yes, they can. Broken ornaments can cause lacerations. And old lights can cause fires. Yeah. Avoid breakable ornaments, especially if you have small children in your house. They're all breakable. Well, yeah, I mean, they ha- Well, yes. Unless you so, get those stupid ones at the mall that are made of, like, dough. Well, you can do that. The Nichols family. Hey, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> We have this ornament. <laughs> I got it when we had Jack. So it says, like, Mom, Dad, Jack. And it's, like, three snowmen. Every year. Every year. We, they decorate the tree. My kids decorate it because they, like, they're so obsessed with it. This is before poor Sam was in the picture. But, right. I only had Jack. It was literally just the three of us. Sam was not born. So every single year the ornaments come out and, they, you know, they take them all out and they hang it. Well, this is mine. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. Every year, Jack goes, oh, the best <laughs> ornament on the tree and puts it like dead center every year. Sam's like, that's so Why don't you throw that out? That's terrible. I'm like, Sam, it's not like we got it after you were born. Leave it to a big brother to just find oh, out. Every year. Like, oh, oh, with Christmas ornament. Best ornament. Best ornament right here. <laughs> and every year, Sam gets so upset. I'm like, Sammy, it's from 2004. You were born in 2006. You can't be you upset. I didn't get it in 2007 after right. you were born. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> It's for the three of you. We didn't get one to see. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, we have one with you in it. Right, so just throw that one out. I'm like, but that was our family that. <laughs> Every year it's a thing. It's hysterical. But that is one of those ceramic ones. <laughs> my kids fight over. Um, so my husband loves German Shepherds, and we used to have a German Shepherd. Mm-hmm. And so when she died, I gave him a little German Shepherd ornament that has wings. Mm-hmm. It's a little angel German Shepherd. Mm-hmm. Every year they fight over who's going to hang that thing on the tree. I'm like, who's hanging baby Nini? That's mine. It's You hung her last year. This year it's my turn to hang. I'm like, guys, there's 5,000 ornaments. Yeah. Like, we have to find oh, that one. And I have one from Hawaii with black sand. And they yeah. fight over those two ornaments. Everywhere we go, we get an ornament. We do, too. That's like, so I love that. I do. I actually, that is probably one of my favorite past Christmas. Is when because we, you remember everything. Yeah, I'm so, like, oh, we got this here. Oh, we got this here. Like, it's nice. I just went to London. I just mm-hmm. came back. What a great city. I loved it. Went to the Tower of London, bucket lister. I've read like every book on Henry VIII, his wives. I'm obsessed. Mm-hmm. I know. So I got my Christmas ornaments. I got Henry VIII and all his wives. From it, my... Are they separate? Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have Henry and all his wives in my tree. It's front and center. And just to top it off, I bought Winston Churchill too. <laughs> so I'm going to have Winston Churchill, Henry VIII. All those wise. Nice. Can't wait. Nice. Like, I'm a little bit weirdo, I know. Like, but I like, I love it. I was, the whole, before I went over there, I'm like, I'm getting Henry and I'm getting all his wives <laughs> in my tree. And I found it. I was like, oh, it comes in a package. <laughs> so, so just dope. And I can't wait to put him on my tree. That's your favorite. And Jax is the one without Sam. Yeah, it's awful. Same, yeah. well, so they can hurt you more than one well, way. See, at least Henry had enough wives. All of my kids can put, all of my kids can put yes, a, a wife up. And my husband too. And poor Sammy breaks everyone. My mother gets all her grandkids an ornament every year. And it's always something they like that year. Like, it really is. Like, you can see, like, the time. George from Up Mice and Men. I'm going to love it and I'm going to pet it. Every (laughs) single time. I'm like, don't open it until we're going to hang it on the tree. Because she always goes, like, weeks in You know, and he's like, no, I just want to take it on. I just want to pet it. I can see the picture on the box. It's a Hallmark (laughs) ornament. Like, I see what it is. That's cute. You got whatever you like this year. And it's really funny, though, because you can see, like, oh, remember he loved that. Like, it's literally what they love that year. It's really cute. Every year. I'm not kidding you. Every single year, the kid takes the ornament out of the box and immediately breaks it. <laughs> immediately. Every single one of his ornaments is broken on that tree. Every single one. I'm always like, wait, wait who's this? And Jack's like, it's broken. It's Sam's. I'm like, oh, yeah. 13? You think you would learn? No. Nope. 13 years. Every single year, he breaks that ornament. We'll see if he knows it this year. I'm going to love it. I'm going to pet it. I'm going to call it <laughs> I don't know. And then he's like all upset every year. I'm like, why do you do this? I, it's just beyond me. Wow. Yeah. God so. Bless. They sell you about the decorating. Avoid breakable ornaments. Inspect your lights and cords mm-hmm. when you're mm-hmm. hanging them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And be careful on ladders. Well, yeah. You don't want to should go without saying. Down but, with you. Yeah. It would be awful. Or outside, hanging oh, the lights. You don't want to slip and fall in the ice. Like you know, Christmas. You don't want to do that. 
can't even get the words out. What's that Chevy Chase movie where he's like hanging out? Oh, Christmas like, Vacation? I don't think I've ever watched it. And I, I know hate everybody's those movies. probably having a heart attack. I right hate now, any of those movies. You know me. I mean, I've seen pieces of them, but Chevy mm. Chase gets my nerves. I can't. If it's not dry, I don't really like it. Oh, I like I like, I like a good slapstick, I know you do. but I, Chevy never did for me. Anyway. Anyway. I. Anyways. <laughs> Last. Oh, is it a doozy? Last hazard. This no. has to be carved in the turkey or something, right? No. It's wrapping paper. Deadly, vicious, Jack the Ripper wrapping paper. Deadly wrapping paper. Um, quote. Almost as deadly as Santa. Almost. <laughs> quote. Wrapping paper is festive, and so are roaring fires. But they don't mix. No shit, Sherlock. Uh-huh. Like, So apparently people throw their wrapping paper into like their bonfires outside or their fireplaces while the fire's going. But wrapping paper has like chemicals in it. So they ignite suddenly and burn super intensely. Yeah, so we'll like pop paper. out, like oh, so heads. the. I think it'd be like they were getting paper cuts and shit. Though. So it's no, but that's what I was thinking because I saw wrapping paper. I'm like, yes. Paper. Do you know when you get a paper cut when you're wrapping? Yeah. Pa- it, that hurts. It hurts. You suck. Mm, trying to, yeah. Yep. Um. So anyway, so don't throw your wrapping paper in your fires because they burn super intensely. It can cause sparks, and then your tree goes up, and then it's a disaster. <laughs> Lights go out. You know. That wire that was hanging loosely, oh, you're all You're going to trip off the ladder. You're going to fall. The whole house is going to be up. Everybody's flames, going up and in flames. And next thing you know, here comes the mall Santa, and you're all fucking done. And you're slipping and sliding right <laughs> up the your door. little Mary Janes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all that patent leather. <laughs> Velvet and patent leather. Slip and slide. Um, and also, just a reminder to check your smoke detectors. Yes. Yeah. You did remind us of the time change. Because, you did. know, now that we've had the time change, I think it's dark at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm ready to be in bed by 3. Like, I'm driving it's over here. Really it's early. not that late. No. If this was summertime, I would be, like, getting my second wind. Yeah. I'm like, I want to be in bed under my heated blankets, and I want to be in my pajamas, and I want to be eating ice cream. And I'm like, what? Uh-huh. You, I feel like I'm out at midnight. Uh-huh. I hate this time. It's 7.30. It's 7.30, and I feel like it's midnight. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm done. Uh-huh. All right. Well, That's it. Be that careful. Note, be careful. Have a wonderful Christmas. Yes. Hanukkah, or whatever you tend to celebrate. Yes. And a very safe New Year's, please. Mm-hmm. New Year's terrifies me. It's like literally the one day a year I hate to be out on the road. I hate it. I'm just convinced I'm going to get killed by a car accident. Uh, I go out every New Year's. No, I hate going With out the kids, New Year's. the whole family. I hate it. I hate New Year's Eve. I hate it. We go out to eat every year. No. I want to be home. Then we come home. And we used to have a big rager. And even when the kids are small, like we had a really big party every year. And I remember my friend was bringing... Like a newer boyfriend over, and mm-hmm. she, he was like, and we had kids, like we had two yeah. kids, and we had kids young, like no one had kids when we had little kids. And I, I like, I, she was like, oh, we're walking up the street, you know, they had to park far away because it wasn't parking in my house, and um, he was like, oh, so you know, like what do they, what do you do, like play games or whatever, and she, he's like, so it's like a quiet. Thing like they have little kids, so it's got. And then they like turn the corner, and like all they could hear was the people noise. on the trees, underwear the hanging off the deck. And they're like, "He's like, is that is that where we're going?" And she's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Don't they have like little kids?" And she's like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Well, what do they do?" She's like, "They sleep through it. They never wake up." And he's like, "Okay." Like he was shot. We used to, like it was a big pot. Yeah, we used to have a blast. But what then they got the older, and then you couldn't really. I mean, it's hard enough because like Jack goes out, and now all your friends have kids, and my friends have little kids. So they can't, I mean, they can't all get babies. We have everybody over get drunk and play Cards Against Humanity and pee yapping and laughing. Yeah, we used to. But I'm inside in drunk. my home. I yeah, we were always at anywhere. my house. Like, I don't want to be out on the roads driving anywhere. We, all, we go out to eat and then we'd have everybody and over. And the thought of being at a club or something with 8,000 no, people who all want to kiss you at midnight, I'm good. I'm good. That's not the part that I mind. I just, I don't want to be out like that. I just want to be out. I like people coming over. I don't mind people coming over, but I'm no. in my own home. I don't have to worry about yeah. driving and some weirdo wiping me and my family out. Yeah, be careful. Be. Don't drink and so drive. There's Ubers, there's years. lifts, there's everything. Yes, and um, scissors and scrubs would love to hear from you in the new year. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to throw those reviews out where they're they're coming in. And I want to thank everybody who is leaving us a review because mm-hmm. they crack me up. Some of them are really funny. Yeah. Um, look forward to hearing from you in the new year and... Maybe in the new year we'll get a live show going or something. Let's see oh, what the new boy. year brings. We're going to celebrate our year anniversary in March. Let's see what happens. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And uh, we'll see you in 2020. Mm-hmm. Like, subscribe, rate, and review the Scissors and Scrubs podcast on whatever podcast app you listen to us on. 
Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Scissors and Scrubs. And email us any of your stories or thoughts to scissorsandscrubs at gmail.com.